It's a marriage of art and science, millions of years in the making. This is really um, the core of what a lot of the exhibits at natural history museums try to do. They try to get you information or let you know what life was like um, in prehistory, in deep time, before there were any people on the planet. Picturing the past, showing now through January 4th, is the largest assembly of paleo art in more than 25 years. Paleo art is art that is based on scientific evidence. It tries to reconstruct uh, the life or the environments of the past using fossil evidence, scientific inference, comparisons with modern animals. It's really the best way we have to get a sense of what life was like long before there were any people on the planet. The show features 85 juried selections from more than 300 works submitted by paleo artists worldwide. The story of our ancient past is told through paintings, through textiles, and sculpture. So the sculpture is from uh, a Japanese artist. His name is Hirokazu Tokugawa. Uh, and I've known him for many years. He actually came out recently to see his work in the show. It's, um, it's a, a feathered dinosaur uh, that's name is Sidipati. It uh, is from Mongolia. It's, uh, it's related to other uh, dinosaurs called oviraptors. And they're a really remarkable, very bird-like group of dinosaurs that we've recently discovered had feathers. There are several textiles in this show, and their inclusion was kind of a surprise to me. I didn't realize that there were that many artists that were working in uh, textile arts that were drawing on uh, deep time, on paleontology as an inspiration for their work. And one of those artists is right here in Albuquerque. Her name is Sally Williams, and she does quilts uh, that have uh, images of uh, prehistoric fish in them. So this is way back in time from when the fish were crawling out of the water onto land, and one of these early sort of lungfish uh, relatives that uh, was making that transition is called Eusthenopteron, and so she has this beautiful quilt and has used that lobe-finned fish as part of the patterning of it. So this big piece right here is uh, kind of the latest and greatest reconstruction of Tyrannosaurus rex. It's by an artist named R.J. Palmer, who works for the video game industry. And as part of a project that he's working on, they're trying to do the most accurate T-Rex to date. So he worked with um, scientists and other artists to start from the bones of a Tyrannosaurus rex skeleton add the appropriate muscles and soft tissue and then flesh it out in the in the right covering and get some realistic color on there so it's a little bit beefier than you might have seen uh, t-rexes in the past that is in line with new thinking about um, how much musculature these animals might have had if you're moving around a you know a 40 foot long animal you need some some pretty beefy thighs and and uh, and strong muscles Picturing the past gives guests a unique insight into our best estimation of ancient creatures unlike any other medium. And it does so in dramatic, sweeping fashion. There's a high degree of uh, extrapolation and inference and sometimes speculation, but that's where the art in paleo art comes in. Uh, and all of it ideally is scientifically informed or based on something that we can see in animals today.